Good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, first of all, let me apologize because I was supposed to be here at uh, the starting at 10 o'clock. However, due to a lot of reorganization, I have been running on the road today attending various things. So, uh, let me first congratulate the Inlets for organizing this important event. And to all the participants here at the very high level, who all are responsible for shaping our young minds. So I will start with the previous panel's last rapid round. So if, if you had put up a rapid uh, question to me as uh, teaching by faculty, teaching by internet enabled system or teaching by peer group, I will always choose peer group. There is no question. And uh, similarly, if you show, show me a choice between attendance in classroom, sincerity in outside classroom and doing well in exam, then I will choose sincerity in outside classroom with your job. Because if you see, uh, there is a joke about India that in everywhere else people become engineering, engineer to do something. In India, people start thinking about what to do with their life after becoming an engineer, which is true with everybody, all of us. When a child is passing 12th, the whole world is trying to make that child an engineer. Right. And frankly, tell all, they will give a challenge to all of you, how many parents will be happy if a child becomes engineer and get an engineering job and remains in engineering for the whole life without doing anything else. Most of us will be dissatisfied that you should do something else also. So the world is going to a place where your learning has to be constant and any achievement which was there in a previous generation as an end achievement is not an end achievement at all. You have to keep striving for further goals. So the role of teaching is not the classroom teaching at all. All of you are at the forefront of this revolution. You have to recognize it. I have been attending such conferences from 2009 at least when I was technical education commissioner at that time. Thank you, sir. And I have been insisting on colleges to give a slightly more degree of freedom. Your end result should be when your child is totally free to study, totally free to come to the class or not to come to the class, free to listen to the professor or not listen to the professor as long as he can learn the subject and get pass marks in exam and knows what to do in the college, what to do in the life. Because much more than the subject and the pass mark and the good mark and the distinction mark, what you have to enable the child is to become master of their own life, master of their own learning. And they should be enabled to decide on their own. This is the critical thing which we are lacking and therefore we are producing a lot of coders, lot of programmers, but not enough leaders. I agree, not all the students can be leaders, but in a class of 60 or in a class of 100, if you want everybody to do moderately well, you can achieve it by insisting on classroom, fixed test, practice test, self-study, forced study, self-study hour, banning the child to do anything else, then everybody will score good, better, better than average, very good. All this thing you can achieve. Nobody will fail because you are controlling everybody's academic input, academic output, academic rigor. But none of them will be a stereotype breaker and a real leader. If you want to give freedom to the child, give freedom to the group, some of them may turn out to be excellent. Some of them may be leaders, some of them have failed. But that is part of the life on a random given group. Somebody has to excel. You should not curtail freedom because some person may fail because of your freedom. Because unless you gain freedom, what? people will not excel. If, if we want to emulate all the good colleges, Harvard, Oxford and what not, and US do they really bother about classroom physical attendance? And if somebody has taken admission through donation or something in Harvard, which is not such a unique thing, they don't pass out. They just do something and then never academically excel. What we see is that in 
Nobel Prize winners, there are so many from Harvard, so many from Manspoon. But do you ever see that how many people took admission in a class in Harvard? Have they all passed with distinction? No. Many of them fail, many of them decide it is not my path. They just leave the college and go out because they are of a different mind. We are not allowing anybody. Who was Bill Gates? What happened to Steve Jobs? They all decided college is not good enough or I am not good enough or something is mismatching. They just left. So you know the great degree of Steve Jobs? Nothing, a college dropout. So my point is that unless you give that opportunity that somebody need not attend classes, somebody may barely pass out, then these people will do well in the life. Now as a senior IAS officer, I have to tell some anecdotes, otherwise my speech will be incomplete. That's the So I am an electrical engineer from IT BHU, 85 39 match. I was permanently ranked two because the topper was was very, very serious apart from being brilliant. I was not so serious. So he always topped, I always second. Third onwards, there used to be a competition. The person who topped did to management and he went into banking. He was doing very well. I came to IAS and I did not study anything except studying electrical engineering after passing out. I took electrical engineering and became IAS. The most successful persons today are those who went to U.S. Yes. Why? Because they have enough to do. The persons who barely passed, just around 7, sometimes below 7 CGPA also. Why they did not pass? Because they were all reading C++ on their own. The electrical engineering C++ in 89 or C. I don't even remember whether C++ existed or not. C existed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, whatever Cobol, Pascal, uh, Fortran, whatever they were doing, they were in a different world. They used to set a library, dig around because there was no internet, search for some book. There is no faculty help. Zero. Because the, at that time itself, mini computer was there, personal computer. First time in 86, 88 came to BHU also in computer department. Electrical came in our computer, PC in electrical came in our last semester. So these were some three, four people who were hardcore in code, coding. That means their mind is computer, they could not get ranked, they are in electrical. So the electrical, their passing was dependent on us. The last night or night before that, through evening, they will keep roaming. Uh, two people, uh, me and my friend were, were very famous for keeping awake the whole night. We will have five days of exam, five nights we will not sleep, we will only sleep between two to five. And the whole night this whole group will come, because it is now 12 o'clock, I am going to sleep, can you wake me up at 3 o'clock? Somebody will come at 1.30, can you wake me up at 4.30? So we too used to roam around the corridor studying, because it is not possible to study whole night in a room, you go off to sleep, especially when you are not sleeping for consecutive days. So we will keep managing them, some of them will be afraid to give exam, we will pick them up, take them on our cycle, just sit and write anything, don't worry. To our credit, three, four people like us, we ensured that all 40 of us passed. And these people are now sitting in the technology core forefront into Qualcomm's, NVIDIA's and other places, who never did anything and professors only shouted at them that you don't respect a bit thinking. But these are the people who are shaping the world today. So my point, this is the only point I want to make. There is no point to all other things. You are all expert. You have been listening to people on how exactly deliver. If you remember one thing is that this time will never come into the child's life. Give them freedom. Your college, your institution will grow only with that type of freedom when you have two persons of excellence. Not that how many people have passed out and you may feel happy at your past percentage and your job placement. That will not make history for you. History will be made by how many people have achieved excellence. And for that, if there is a ratio where the failure is also an option, you should not be afraid. Let the system learn towards that direction, give freedom to the children. I could have spoken more, but sorry, since I am already late and other rooms may be going for lunch in advance. 
shall I not like to say, please remember these words. The more you give freedom, you may have short term pain, but that is the only way. Today, a professor cannot say that what I teach is the ultimate. Because the world information is already available everywhere. You can at best be a guide. And the higher education from everywhere, no. faculty has to be one level below the level of admission which is happening, which is true of IIT Bombay, which is number one in uh, admissions, IIT Chennai, which is number one in ranking, or the best NIT, or a BIT, or a SRM, or a CET, a CIT, Coimbatore, or GCE, or any engineering college. By definition, because we have such hardworking student, the student in your institution is always better than your faculty because of our ecosystem, where the best students go out. So faculty has to recognize that reality, that your child is probably going to do better than you, and you should take pride into that, saying that you guided, so that he remembers you with affection at the end of the academic period. Thank you.